Hey, Andrea, thanks for being here. Thanks for being on the podcast. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. It feels like it was just a few weeks ago that we were hanging out together in Vegas, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just, just a few weeks ago. It might have been a year, but I think it was really like, actually, it was a year ago, too. <laughs> was it a year ago, too? Yeah. Oregon. <laughs> oh, that's true. And, and, and the year before in Oregon, that's true. And again, next year, but we'll get to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had uh, the privilege of actually listening to you and your husband earlier today. I was listening to your, the latest episode of the Self-Published Strong podcast, mm -hmm. and, and the two of you were chatting about the, um, I guess, your takeaways from Vegas. Yeah. And so you and your husband have been doing this podcast together for how long now? Um, almost a year now. Okay. And, and what's the, that, that, that was a, a, a different sort of episode because you guys normally focus on. We do movies. Um, and once about once a month or once every two months, we do a, an episode that's devoted entirely to marketing because I'm kind of a marketing um, obsessed person. <laughs> so it's my favorite topic. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And I, I that's an amazing uh, thing that you're doing, and I'm going to want to talk a little bit about that. But what was the genesis for you, you, the two of you getting together to talk about movies? How, how was that idea born? So um, last year, at, I, I've always wanted to do a podcast, and we actually talked about starting one about five years ago, but we never, and we wanted to, it to be for authors, but we couldn't figure out what, you know, what we wanted it to be exactly about. And then last year at the Business Masterclass, uh, Joanna Penn was like, no, you're the type of person you need to have your own show. You need to go start a podcast. And, and I just, I, I've always wanted to do it. So I just thought about it. And, you know, I, I talked about it with my husband and with my mom, who's a, she's a, also likes marketing and all that. And um, just couldn't figure out a topic. And then I was like, wait a second, we're movie buffs. I know there are authors and writers out there who love movies. And I'm like, we talk about them all the time and things that, you know, uh, writers can learn from movies. And so that was pretty much, we decided to start it about a year ago, and then we pre-recorded 10 ep episodes and then released them all in February and March-ish, and we're just, you know, in every episode we give a motivational quote, because one of our philosophies is that it's possible to be successful regardless of background and your, you know, who you are, everything, and I just, I just, some shows are kind of negative about being successful, you know, and so we have, we have a more positive outlook, and then every episode we give either a marketing or a publishing tip. And then, like I said, every month or every two months, we do a full episode on marketing. Okay. And about they, once a month, we have um, guest people who come in and they pick the movie and we talk about them. So, like, we just did Kevin J. Anderson and he chose Throw Mama from the Train. Oh, and awesome. It's just such a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. I was going to ask, what, what's one of your, the favorite movies that you guys have talked about so far? Or is it hard? Um, we like Throw Mama from the Train. Uh, we also like Thor Ragnarok. And ah. Which like is one of my favorites. Ones. Yes, I love comedy. <laughs> um, but we have done, like, have you seen The Meg yet from the summer? No, no, that's not a comedy. No, it's not. <laughs> but I love, it. the listeners of my podcast will know, I like monsters. I like dinosaurs. Really? We've done all the Jurassic Park movies, every single one of them. Um, I like, you know, things that can destroy people. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I write a lot of horror slash fantasy. And so, right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, we've only done, like, three romances. And... <laughs> So how does that tie back to the marketing business? Obviously, you have a marketing tip or you have a motivational uh, quote um, as well. But when you're specifically talking about story and structure yeah. and all the things that come into a movie, how does that tie back and how does your audience react to that? So we actually, that was one of the reasons we struggled so much with coming up with a theme was because marketing is my passion and I love it, but I didn't want to necessarily talk about it all the time. And so we, more than even marketing, we really like movies. And I was like, I want a podcast that mixes two things because you need to be a good marketer in order to sell your books, but you need to write good books. If you don't write good books, you can't sell books. And so we wanted to be able to help people, um, you know, through movies, which is our passion to see, you know, good storylines, good, good story structure, um, good character development, uh, what an inciting incident is, um, climaxes, trifel cycles, things like that. So we wanted to be able to tie the two together and what was, what was your original question? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it's the, the link, the reaction of the audience oh, yeah. who may be looking for marketing information. And yeah. 
Well, it's been, we've had really good um, reactions so far. My husband and I, it's kind of a comedy episode. We've been told, or a podcast, we've been told multiple times that we have a good blend between comedy and instruction. And so some authors, they don't like that it's not straight information. They don't like the back and forth banter that my husband and I uh, have. And so, but we are finding our niche, you know, people who love movies and who like discussing them and who want to be successful authors. And not every successful author likes movies. And so, you know, so the reaction's been, it was mixed in the beginning, but now it's, it's been very good. We've got um, a solid following now. I guess that happens as the audience normalizes and, and new people discover it. Yeah. It's kinda, oh, that, that's kind of cool. So tell us about your marketing business and, and the marketing success that you help authors publishing strong with. <laughs> Very nice lead in there, Mark. <laughs> so it's called Self Publish Strong, and it's my school of you know marketing classes and things like that. I'll eventually do probably uh, craft classes. I don't know. There's a lot of craft ca classes available, but that all started out um, when I first started publishing uh, in 2011. I was a member of a group called Indie Author Hub, and they actually elected me to be their executive director a few years later. Um, but I love sharing and teaching, and so we would hold, I would hold um, four to five conferences a year that were just for our little group of authors, and I would teach them about marketing and, you know, things that come naturally to me that, I don't know, it must be inherited because my mom is a marketer, um, and she loves it, and so I, I would teach them those kinds of things, and then it just got to the point where people wanted me, you know, I was being requested to go to conferences all over, and I was like, most of them weren't, you know, it's just, they just, it wasn't plausible for me, especially as we started growing a family. And so my courses, I decided to put courses together because they are, once I do it, the information's there. I don't have to be all over the country and I can just be like, here, you know, go watch this $25 course, you know, to get the information that's, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's mostly everywhere. You can go anywhere, you can read, you can listen to podcasts, but it's condensed into one little thing and so yeah so that's basically how it evolved was me wanting to be able to teach people but unable to be everywhere and this is why I also don't charge a whole lot for my my courses because I'm not trying to make money I just want to pay the bills that come from the courses with the courses right and still be able to teach and help people it's like a case of necessity breeds invention you wanted to help people but you couldn't be everywhere at all times yeah especially when I'm <laughs> pregnant which I am right now <laughs> Which means you can still help people from afar. Now you did travel to Vegas recently, but uh, yeah. But I, I think I, I remember you warned uh, the group that if you get up and leave in the middle of a session, it's not because you're being it's not because I'm mad. <laughs> you have needs. That <laughs> yeah, like either I have to go eat or I'll puke or I have to go puke. <laughs> Which maybe that's a little bit too much to say on a podcast, but you know, morning sickness happens when you're pregnant. <laughs> yeah, these things do happen. It's just natural biology. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so how long? Uh, how long have you been doing uh, the, the marketing support? You said you started shortly after 2011. Yeah, yeah. I did a whole bunch of informal ones. I've done, um, I did a couple formal ones and I charged like $5 for, you know, to, for people. Right. Uh, I started, yeah, 2011 and then I started getting really serious about them um, around 2014, 2015 when I started my BookBub Promotions and More Facebook group. Okay. And so I would do courses for them that I would record and then charge them $5, you know, to see, to have access to. And then I started the actual teachable courses last year. Okay. That's great. And so not only do you have these things going on, but you're still writing and uh -huh. you have a new release coming out very soon, actually, as we, as we speak of this, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about your new release? <laughs> um, so I'm, I believe in writing to market, but I have a hard time following it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all of my books are kind of like a mix between fantasy and horror, and I, I'm a huge Lovecraft fan and M.R. James fan, and so I take a lot of those stories and I just make them my own. But this new release is the fifth book in a series that I've been working on that is technically urban fantasy. It's, all, it's, most, it's pretty much all on Earth, and, but it's based on a magic system that I've created, and um, the monsters are all my own. Like I have vampires, but they're fire vampires. So they drain people's blood and then they burn the victim and eat the smoke. And so <laughs> it's how, it's how they survive during the day. They, you know, they, because fire, you know, the sun's made of fire. And so right. they eat fire, eat smoke, and they're able to be out in the sunlight. Uh, and resistant. then I've got it's like using the poison from a snake to have the antidote, right? To create. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> much. 
And it's a lot of fun to write. Those scenes, you know, where, where they come across the burned corpses and nothing else is in, in the room is burned and the cops know, the forensic scientists know the person died in that position. Oh, and they're wow. like, why isn't anything else burned? And my oh, main character cool. controls fire. Her job is to stop bullets and explosions and things like that. So the cops, she works you know, really closely with local agencies and they're like, what the heck happened, you know? And so it's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, the fifth book. Like, yeah, that's the fifth book. And then the sixth book is I'm almost done with that right now. And it's coming out about two weeks after the next one comes out. Okay. Let's mention the titles in case we've intrigued people that wanted to go search for them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. The first book in that series is called Shade Amulet. And it is, and this is, this is the way I just a little side note. Uh, it's only on Kindle Unlimited. Once my pages read, you know, page reads go down, then I make my books go wide. Right. And um, yeah, that's the first book, Shade Amulet. And the fifth book is Forbidden Knowledge. That's the one that's coming out in about a week and a half. And then Demon of Darkness is the one after that. Cool. That is awesome. It's fun. But the, the question that I'm sure everyone's asking is you run this marketing business. You are a mother and you're writing these novels. You're doing three full-time jobs already. <laughs> how do you how do you balance your time? How do you how do you figure that out? Like, does the marketing take away from your writing time? Does you know uh, things come up as a as a parent as well? How do you how oh, do you deal with yeah. that? Um, yeah, my kids are sick this week, and as we said before we started uh, recording, I'm coming down with it now. But I. Um, Having kids has actually helped me be more structured. Um, before my first was born, I only wrote and published three books. And since she's been born, I've got 51 plus titles now. And so Whoa. having kids <laughs> <laughs> having kids has actually helped me to be more organized. And um, I'm a fast typer. I type 150 to 175 words a minute. Um, I broke my finger, though, two years ago. So I've been dictating since then. And I can do about 10,000 words in an hour. And so wow. I just dictate a, uh, an hour a day and I can do 15 minute segments and turn on a movie or just put kids down for breakfast. And I'm like, mommy's going to go talk her books for a minute. And I go in the basement and I dictate for 15 to 20 minutes. And then, you know, they're, they're perfectly happy when I have a newborn or a baby, it's a little harder. And so sometimes right. like twice a week, I'll have a babysitter come in for about an hour just so I can get some work done. And I also have a very helpful husband, you know, he's very involved in the business and he will, you know, send me off to, the local grocery store, which has a lounge in it. And I sit and write or edit in that. <laughs> you go to the grocery store to write. That's kind of cool. It's like, you see yes. it's a coffee shop or a bar or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, no, it's, it's the closest thing. It's like about a mile from our house. And so they have a lounge that's upstairs with a view of the whole store. And it's just, it's noisy, you know, it's that perfect right. amount of background noise. And I just sit and edit in there, you know. Wow. So, so, and I'm a project person. Like I don't, I can't write every day. I'm not one of those writers. I do binge projects. And so I'll take a break from writing to do a course or to um, set up a marketing plan or, you know, whatever. So, right. so you're, you're going to fill that any, any of those little minutes that you can. Yeah. Um, you said something that sparked a question and I've completely drawn a blank on it, of course, right now. But, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> It, it, no, it, it, when you talk about uh, a dictating, uh, I was curious as to what sort of software, what process you use. Are you using like Dragon or are you getting someone to do the transcriptions? How does that work? No, only Kevin Anderson does, has a person to actually do the transcriptions for him <laughs> and his wife, Rebecca. Uh, no, I use Dragon, naturally speaking, and I use version 15 and I've got a little lapel mic that I just attached, which you can't see right here. And then I've got a digital recorder that was, it's a Sony. It cost me $45. And then that way I'm not glued to my computer and I do a lot of pacing. Okay. I pace in the basement back and forth while I'm dictating because movement helps the brain move, you know, <laughs> you so. move like the character. Sometimes Do you catch yourself. Doing that? <laughs> no, generally my movements, like I don't even know where I'm walking. I'm just walking. And I usually have a, a trail that I follow <laughs> in okay. the basement because you know, kids toys. So I'll like make a trail or just follow the exact same footsteps every time. And Oh, wow. Please tell me you're wearing a Fitbit and you're part of a group of where you're challenging. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? No. Yeah. Cause Brian Meeks <laughs> needs someone to really uh, hold him accountable because he's got a high step. So, oh, nice. <laughs> um, so we were together uh, at the WMG business masterclass in Vegas a few weeks ago. We're, we're going to be instructors at the 2019 yeah. Uh, and just before we started recording, we started talking about, you know, reminiscing about the notes we took and all the things, uh, the value that we got from it. 
what what are some of the things and and again uh, for listeners of the podcast uh, Andrea and her husband did a fascinating job talking about just four I believe it was just four the takeaways from yeah. that you had from from the session and I love that I was you know I was there I was like yeah that was amazing oh I forgot about that and and, yeah. and so it was great <laughs> listening to you uh, talk about that because it really sparked things in my mind but uh, what's something else that you uh, uh, that you sort of took away from that that you didn't get a chance to talk about in your uh, other podcast um let's see there's so much like the whole entire thing well attending last year it was overwhelming you know it was longer and it was farther away from home and i just i was very homesick because i've not been away from my husband and kids for more than a day before and so I'm really glad I went again this year because pretty much everything, they did have a lot of repeat, but everything really sunk in this year. And I mean, we had, we, let's see, the business masterclass. Um, I mean, there were cl- ca- uh, cash flow presentations, you know, teaching you how to manage your finances successfully as an author and basically the importance of not going into debt for your business in case, you know, there's, you run into a problem because author businesses, they come up and they go up and down really steeply. And if you're not, saving money for when those uh, royalties drop, then you run into problems. You can't run your business anymore if you don't have funds anymore. Right. And so that was something that, that um, I really appreciated. And then the importance of like working with assistants, you know, hiring people to keep you from burning out. And I do have a, a, an assistant and she has made my life so much easier. She's absolutely wonderful. And okay. um, I've referred her to a bunch of authors, you know, Kevin, she's one of Kevin's assistants now. Um, but she's absolutely fantastic. And so there's just, I mean. So what does yeah. this assistant do for you? Like what, what are the sorts of tasks that they would take on, uh, over for you? So I have her, uh, I have her typeset my books. I really enjoy typesetting, but I mean, InDesign, it takes a long time. And I don't have vellum. You use you know? InDesign. Okay. I do, yeah. Right. I'm, a, I'm an Adobe girl. Old, old school. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I learned when I first did yep. it, 2000 four or whatever. Yep. Yep. Uh, the new, we have a uh, CS2 in design CS2, which was awful. And I do have the, the cloud version, which is so much better. Uh, I just um, got the cloud version this year and yes, you are right. It is so much sweeter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So I have her typeset all of my, um, my print books. I do my own eBooks cause it takes me like two minutes compared to even the five to 10, the vellum, you know, that she uses. And then I have her, uh, plan promotions. So I've got a perma-free book that does really well. It gets accepted regularly by um, some major promoters. And I just have her make sure that's getting promoted about once a month. And then she sets up my newsletter. I write my newsletter, but I have her upload pictures. I have her upload promotional information, things like that. And then I go in and add captions to the pictures and actually add my email itself. And then I send them. Um, She does my list cleanings for me. We've actually got one going on right now where, you know, she's, she makes sure that, um, so I don't just delete one and two star people. I always email them first and say, Hey, do you still want to be on my list? And we've had about 200 people say, yes, I, I, I read all of your emails. I still want to be on your list. And I have her manage all that, you know? Okay. Um, I have her manage polls that I run. Um, she's actually the one who posts my updates on my podcast every week. I tell her what to say, but she does the actual posting, you know, she gets the links okay. together and all that. And there's, she, yeah, if I could outsource, you know, babysitting, <laughs> things like that. She's absolutely amazing. She's, she's been a lifesaver and a, a game changer for my business. Well, that's fantastic. So when did, uh, when did you start working with an assistant? Um, I've worked with assistants off and on for about five years and they were all awful. Um, okay. Not awful people. Like some of them were relatives and so it wasn't were, a good match, you know, right? Yeah, it wasn't a good match or they just, you know, cause I, I try to pick people who are, who loved reading and liked my books, but they don't necessarily understand the business itself. And so I was spending a lot of time training right. and then I wasn't happy with the results. Um, so, but I found her another author. Um, let's see, another author friend re- recommended her back in 2016 okay. and or 2017, like probably May or April. And I've been using her ever since then. And so what is the process like? Do they work for you certain days of the week or just specific tasks? Like how does that get divided up? Um, I have her do some tasks that I have her do regularly. Like she uploads a chapter a day to Wattpad for me. Um, And then she just does random things here and there for me. She has a lot of reminders to remind me to do things because I don't, you know, I can't remember everything. And um, I'm not sure how she schedules her time. I know she works with a bunch of other authors, but it's so, I mean, she probably has, you know, time block set aside for each author, but 
she gets stuff done. So. <laughs> What would you say to an author who says it's too cost prohibitive to hire an assistant? <laughs> so this is always my recommendation. Um, when we first started working with her, we couldn't technically afford it. I mean, we've got, we had money and personal money that we ended up using for business to pay for her. And we hadn't used personal money in a long time for the business. But I was at the point where my royalties were suffering because I was so busy with being a mom and trying to write more books and, basically just trying to keep up with everything because you just get to the point where you've got too big of a back list and just can't manage everything. And so we borrowed from personal fun money just to pay for her for the first couple of months. And then once she started, really started, and I really started handing projects off to her, uh, my royalties have gone up quite a bit because now I can do the stuff that matters, you know? Yeah. You get stuff out of the way so you can actually produce. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. That is fantastic. So, because you spend a lot of time helping authors with marketing uh, and strategy, um, what's one of the more common things that uh, you find you're having to provide um, when authors first don't know where to start? Like, how do how do they get started with marketing? What's what's sort of a basic level thing that they need to understand? I usually recommend them start even before they have a book available. Uh, start a newsletter list. And then when they have that first book available, make sure they've got a short story to use as a newsletter, you know, sign up incentive and uh, ethical bribe as they call them. And just <laughs> <laughs> because uh, if your newsletter, if you start at the beginning, you'll be far, much farther ahead of authors who don't have and don't start one until later because you capture those early readers. And every list, even organic lists drops about between 14 and 20% of subscribers every year. So you know, authors need to keep that in mind that those, even those early off, those early readers won't always stick around, but right. it's, it's still important to have one. And once you have that, I mean, it's yours, you own that list. And then once you start releasing, you know, and all authors gradually get faster then that you have that basis and you don't need to, you know, promote as much and you're not reliant on random readers to post reviews because you've got a newsletter list that can do it for you and things like that. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. And then along a similar line, um, if you could go back in time and you could offer yourself some advice when you're first starting out, what's something that you would want to make sure that young Andrea knew? <laughs> young Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, don't stress so much about downloads right then um, because a lot of authors, when they first start out, they freak out because their books aren't selling. But when you first start out, your books aren't going to sell. And the problem is, is if they do sell, then you can't replicate it because <laughs> you don't know why they sold, you know? And so my, my advice would be, I mean, to myself, I mean, we panicked. We were like, we did really well. And then all of a sudden it stopped, you know, what the heck is going on? And that's you, you, the ups and downs when you first start are huge. They're very dramatic and, or they don't exist at all because nobody knows who you are. And so my recommendation to myself would be don't stress over it for at least one or two years or until you've got 10 books or so out, because at that point you can sustain a reader long enough for them to, you know, bring enough income for you not to be experiencing as many ups and downs and all, all of right. that. Fantastic advice. Thank you, Andrea, for that advice. Thanks for hanging out with me in the podcast. I want you to please let uh, listeners know where they can find out more about you, your marketing services and your books. Um, my podcast is free. <laughs> so that's where I always start people. Uh, that's called Self Published Strong. And um, I also have a group for authors called Book Bub Promotions and More. And that's also free. I don't charge people to join on Facebook. <laughs> okay. uh, and then, I mean, my courses, they're on self all on selfpublishedstrongcourses.com. And they range in price from $10 to $50. I even have one that's free that talks about blind testing book covers and descriptions, you know, figuring out how to, if yours are actually working without the readers knowing they're being tested. And then, um, let's see, I mean, email Andrea at self or, you know, whatever. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. We'll make sure to have links to all those things uh, in the show notes for this episode at starkreflections.ca. Andrea, thanks for hanging out with me. It was great to see you again, even though I won't be for another year until we see each other in person. <laughs> yeah, it was great hanging out with you too. And thanks again for inviting me.